Good morning. Back here at the more jig bore. Still looking at the same hole, which uh, is kind of an interesting uh, thing in its own. It's actually something that I'm going to use and I punch a hole in. And it's got some certain problems to it. And uh, one of them is it's two different types of metal that are welded together. And uh, the last uh, episode, uh, I cooked the tooltip uh, uh, run it a little too fast, but it was uh, not too fast for the uh, softer piece on top. So um, I'm going to put a dial bore gauge on it, and uh, let's see. Let's have a let's have a look at what that last cut did. Okay, I'll get the uh, tripod over here about as close as I can, and uh, we can have a look. Okay, let's see what we can do here. There we go. Something a lot like that, huh? Okay. I do the best I can, but you got to realize you are in the way most of the time. <laughs> but that's okay. Okay. What I have here is a standard uh, Poughkeepsie dial bore gauge. And uh, one of the advantages of the jig bore is uh, the um, the vertical uh, adjustment here where you just loosen the clamp and you lift the head up these um, vertical ways uh, with that outstanding scraping. Um, I'll try to get a closer look at that. Um, okay, so the Donald Borges, let's get that in there. Right at the top. Very tight fit on this one. It's right at the, at the lower limit. Okay. Okay, I pretty much had that uh, pretty close to zero there. Might be a little bit off. Okay, let's go down. Now, that's in the soft metal. Go down a little bit and get into that harder metal. Okay, see, we're getting a little tighter there. See that? A tenth or so. It's real sensitive at this, uh, yeah, about two tenths. Go down a little deeper. At, at, there's a point where the tool failed. Okay, that's uh, just a, a two and a half, maybe three tenths tighter as it gets down into the harder metal. Okay, okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm just going <clears> to, <throat> this is fine, I'm going to, uh, this hole, I'm just going to put a, a bronze bushing in it, okay? But if, uh, I'm going to take another cut and uh, we'll see how straight it is. And uh, if it's not straight enough, like for a bearing or something, or, or like it is now, well, what you would do, or what I do, and it's the reason I have the sun at home, see? You see, if I, and I run into these kinds of things, where uh, with an alloy steel where someone welded uh, something to it, uh, or all kinds of things like that, or it somehow got distorted, um, and you have hard and soft spots, uh, you're going to run into trouble cutting it. So you're going to have to go to a, an abrasive process. And that's what I do with the sun and hone. And uh, see, that thing saves me. Now, I could hold um, 50 millions um, taper and diameter with the sun and hone, okay? So I can get close with this machine and get dangerously close with that machine. So, you know, the abrasive processes are generally the most accurate. Okay, so we did that. And um, I guess um, I'm going to put the tool back in. And uh, we'll go through that again. You should, you should be familiar with that. Let me get you uh, 
more situated here. More situated with the more machine. <laughs> oh, gosh. Very tight in here, you know. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, it, it's the same old routine. Um, I'm going to get the tool. Okay, I uh, refresh the tool here. Okay. Very nice. And I'll get it in the head. I think I'll get the head down now. Okay, that's the lock lever. Now there's a micrometer down here, and you can use rods to bring the head exactly, you know, to where you want it. But I don't need to use that very often. So I'm going to start right about there. And uh, I'll get that board in there. Get that down towards the back. Just like that, huh? Okay. Now I get the square. Because that's nice. Tight. Across that vertical way. Across the flat on the side of the head. Okay? Just like that. Bring it down. Let's see if the not influence table locks are on. And they aren't, so now they're off. And I'm gonna roll it back. And I'm gonna bring that point right there on that dot. And um, do a slight adjustment. Okay, the old guy that showed me how to use this machine takes an extraordinarily long amount of time to do this. And maybe I should do it much more carefully. But uh, it seems to work what I'm doing, okay? At least I'm trying. Oh, how does that work? I don't like it. It's too far behind. Okay. Done. Here we go. Uh, a little ahead there. Uh, you can't help but move it, see? Uh, get that right back on there, on that flat. The flat is flat. Oh, perfect. Okay. So, down. Up. Tight. A little bit, a little bit of chips on it. Okay. Here's that lube that I mix up with beeswax and castrol. Molly D makes it black like thread cutting oil and other cutting fluids. <laughs> Put what you want in it. Put WD-40 in it. <laughs> okay. Let's see where we are. Start it up. Okay, where are we? Six, ten. I'm gonna kick it up about seven hundred. Oh, Six seventy five sounds okay. Okay. This back. Right in there. Okay. Now this this tool's gonna be very close to the last four. Out of gear. <laughs> very close. 
<clears throat> so I'm just going to touch it off again because I did grind it and get it down that hole just a little bit. Okay. Okay, that's it. And I'm going to feed it in just a little bit, about two thousandths depth of cut. Okay. Okay. I'm going to lower the spindle head just a little bit. And up. Now, ideally, I would use a shorter bar, but I don't happen to have one handy. Um, but this will work fine. But you always want to take advantage of things like having the shortest bar possible things like that. But one of the things we'll find with the machine is um, that you can use long bars. Okay, um, I'm going to call this good right here, and I'm going to start it up again, okay?